I started coming here when we were still at school and been coming here ever since really. Are we all good to throw the ropes? Affirmative, front eight, we're ready to go. When you're talking about the Abrolhos, it just evokes emotion and you just want to get it out. You just want to tell people. Everyone we talked to about doing this tourism, they just said, it'll never work. You, you are kidding yourself if you think tourism will work at the Abrolhos. It just goes straight in one ear and out the other. And I said, well, you don't know the Abrolhos that I know. Oh, in the early days, I was a full-on surfer and um, the stories of the islands and the surf over here were, were rife. There was only one thing to do and that was get over here and find out for myself. Yeah, so I quit my apprenticeship and I started cray fishing and probably the best thing I did when I was young. Sonia was travelling around Australia and then she moved to Geraldton. I was catching a couple of sharks every day while I was cray fishing and I'd take them in there to the publican and Sonia was the barmaid and uh, I wasn't going to leave so I kept going back. He used to come in for lunch every day. Yeah, this guy seems to be coming in here regularly, yeah. And he said, oh no, they sell really good lunches here, you know. Oh, okay. And that was when he said to me, oh, you can't be in Geraldton and not go to the Abrolhos Islands. And then when I went there and saw how beautiful it was, got together and, yeah, stayed together. Yeah, life over there was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a really close-knit community. Yeah, our whole family life has really revolved around the Abrolhos. Yeah, a lot of people ask me about my childhood and how I feel about it, but as a child, it was just normal. It only sort of kicks in now when you're an adult and you realise how unique it is. Uh, you had to have a pretty good imagination over here, which we all did. We used to make cubbies and rafts, kayak, squidding, all sorts of different things. We'd have sleepovers with other kids from other islands, so we'd get to go explore those islands. And it was a pretty outdoorsy sort of upbringing. Cray fishing was a steady income. After probably the year 2000, it just got harder. Crayfish price went from the highest it's ever been to the lowest it's ever been within a week. And we decided there must be something we can do at the Abrolhos to keep us here. That was our move that started this whole thing. This boat came up in, in Queensland. I saw it in the trader boat. I cut the picture out. I laminated it, kept it in my back pocket. And for 12 months, anyone asked me, what are you doing? I'm gonna buy this boat. I'm gonna do eco-tourism at the Abolis. And they'd all laugh at me. We put in an offer. I had no money. I had 30 days to come up with 1.7 million. <laughs> uh, it was stressful, but I just thought, all right, you sort it out. Yeah, and it did sort out. But not with a lot of obstacles along the way. For the first two years, we had more staff than passengers on the boat. And, you know, a lot of the times we were so close to going broke and uh, we pulled through. And this is us, Eco Umbrellas. We got it. We made it. The different characters on the Umbrellas Islands are just personalities, unique personalities. The fact that we're welcomed in and have those experiences with locals on the islands is just gold. The Abrolhos has been recognised as a world hope spot. So there's two in Australia and there's 85 in the world. So the more exposure it gets, the more we can protect it as a community. Yeah, the experience is very exclusive in a way. It's just full of nature over there throughout the three groups, they've just all got something special about them all. And of course, not forgetting that there's a lot of historical significance over there as well. I tell you what, a lot of exposure from all the Tavia books. People come here just solely for the story and they walk away learning so much more. All these different nationalities were on these ships um, to make up the crew. The bridal turns all messed through here as well. 
for me, it's giving back to other people, showing other people what a unique area we've got and how we should be preserving places like this. It's opened up my eyes to sustainable eco-tourism, that we can actually do tourism and keep it the same as this forever and for our generations to come, uh, our kids and our kids' kids, if we look after it. Would I change the journey? No. We love Gibraltar. Where else would you want to be? At the end of the day, um, it's a good life.